in joy, <laughs> in anticipation, in wonder. We are gathered in the name of art and community. We've journeyed to so many places in our lives and have arrived here to this place, to this theater, at the same time. We bring our hearts and minds, bodies and souls, experiences, and dreams for the future. We arrive as individuals, but in arriving, we have created something larger. A circle that reaches beyond these walls. To the power that blesses us. To that which we hold holy. To that which we thank when the perfect actor walks into the audition. <laughs> when the perfect line flows through our pen. When the phone call offers the role we've been waiting for. When the letter informs us our grant proposal has been awarded. <laughs> <laughs> to that which we thank, we humbly ask, please help us to be present, honest, To trust that all that we have set aside in order to be here will run smoothly in our absence. <laughs> Please help us to bring our communities into this circle with us, for we are ambassadors. Please help us to listen deeply to the words and to the heart. Please help us to hear the circle. Please help us to remember. Please help us to be courageous. Please help us to speak with respect, brevity, and kindness. <laughs> Please help us to grow knowledge, not grudges, when we disagree. Please help us to suspend our certainty. Please help us to care for ourselves. Please help us to welcome whatever arises with grace. Please keep us safe. Please help us to trust that the circle is stronger, wiser, and more powerful than any one of us is alone. We are a circle open to discovery, to possibilities, to sharing our stories, and to writing a new story. We thank that which we thank. And we thank our friends, our families, and each other for their support. We thank our circle for its embrace as we journey through the next few days together. May we transcend. In the name of art and community. Que así sea.
going to be asking particular questions. And those big questions will be woven through all, throughout the entire proceedings. Some of those questions are practical, some of those are big and visionary. And I'd like to read those questions for you. Some of you might be sitting in your seats right now asking, why are we here? <laughs> How did we get here? And where are we going? Those questions are the foundation of this three-day convening. But tonight what we are going to do is provide a basic foundation for that particular journey by looking at those three questions. We will touch upon the origins of the Latino theater commons, both conceptually and in terms of its organization. We will talk a little bit about the commons notion and how it can be an inspiring vision for creating something together. And then, the three of us will guide you through an overview of what this particular three-day journey will look like and feel like. And so, we begin with the question, why are we here? And how did we get here? All of us in this particular room are here to serve as ambassadors. We recognize there are numerous people who are not in this particular circle, and it is up to us to be able to share the message with, our, with everyone who is not present, but is within our hearts and with our spirits. We became ambassadors through a very organic, natural selection process. We were aiming to create a cross-section of the Latino theater field, but it is by means not a perfect cross-section at all. But it does speak to the state of our current relationships with one another. And we are hoping through this day, three-day convening, we are able to build upon those relationships, strengthen them, and bring more people into this particular fold itself. This is about relationship building. And in this relationship building, we are going to spend three days cultivating, honoring, and reflecting upon the, pre the collective wisdom that we all carry with us, that we just need to call attention to. And in order to develop and cultivate that collective wisdom, we are asking you to join us in adopting a couple of six stances. These six stances will help provide a framework for this particular process. The first stance that we invite you to embrace is the stance of deep listening. We all know as individuals we have much to speak about in terms of our experience. And we all want to share those experiences. And we'll have plenty of opportunities in numerous ways to share our wisdom. But we also have to keep our hearts open, our minds open, and our ears open to really listen to what other people are saying. That is the source of our collective wisdom. The second is a stance called the suspension of certainty. It is embracing the unknown. All of us as individuals, wherever we come from, are usually charged with having to know the answers. And we move from that place. And so here we want to create a space where it is possible for all of us to embrace the unknown, to accept the fact there are things that we do not know, but that somebody else might know. And in admitting to the fact that we do not know something, it opens a wide door and allows those answers to emerge from the group. So we're going to invite you to suspend your certainty. Next, we are asking all of us to embrace the idea of seeking out diverse perspectives in order to be able to get a bigger sense of what the field of the systems are like. We all have our own individual perspectives and our own experience, and this is wisdom and knowledge, but each of us individually do not make up the whole. We want to hear all those voices so we can get a more robust image of the entire community that we are forging here tonight. And in order to do that, we need to embrace the notion of respect for others and respect for the group. The ancient Maya had a concept called in naketch, tu eres mi otro yo, you are my other self. And so we invite you into this space to cultivate that sense of mutual respect so that we can be perfect, beautiful reflections of one another through cultivating that respect. Even though we may have disagreements, it is possible to feel and see something differently and come from an open space of love and respect. And next, because this is the first gathering in 25 years, things are going to emerge. 
teams are going to rise up. And we want to be able to welcome all that comes in and be able, through this respect, dis discern and sift through and find the wisdom that we all carry. So we want to welcome all the emotions, all the ideas, all the beautiful visions that will be filtered through the group process here. And we must trust in the transcend. It's that all of us are individuals, but there is power when we come together that is much greater than all of us. And once we accept that fact that as individuals we come from just one place, but we allow the energies to flow through the group and through us, we will be able to weave a beautiful and inspiring vision of the future. And so those are our six stances. And as co-facilitators, we ask you for a moment to understand that we are guiding you through this process. And we would like for you to make a commitment with us. Will you accept our responsibility to shepherd this entire community through the day, three-day convening, on behalf of the entire community? And we ask you to show your commitment to this process, and to us, and to you, through a simple gesture of raising your hand. So please, raise your hand. And that is an expression of your commitment to this group. And now I will pass the floor. logistical things that I'll go through and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dig a little bit deeper about who else is in the room, which is all of you. Um, so this wonderful black box theater is gonna be our home for the next uh, two and a half days. This is where we're gonna primarily operate. Um, we also have the lobby, the bathrooms are outside in the lobby to the left and to the right. Um, we also have the stairs, so when we break up into groups, and there will be times when we break up into small group sizes, eight to 12, they'll vary in size. You know, feel free to kind of roam, but don't go too far, right? Because we need to come and get you at a certain point. So don't leave the building um, with your small groups. Uh, also, to the back here, this small table, there are some flip cams, there are these white flip cams. Um, if you're inspired to document, um, and there's documentation happening all over us, we have the cameras, we have this, a lot of this is gonna be broadcasted on How Around TV, but if there's something that you wanna capture, you know, feel free to grab one of those things um, and, and go ahead and do that. Uh, also, your name tags, they're very, very important, keep them with you. I have a little yellow flower on my name tag, and that's uh, for, uh, steering committee members so you can identify us. So I'm gonna ask quickly that our steering committee members stand so you also can see who's been doing the work over the last <laughs> six years. Again, Ryan, thank you. So, uh, we're, we're gonna uh, refer to our steering committee members to help us kind of shepherd all of you through various transitions and moving of things and you know getting around so you know we'll, we'll be calling those folks out but also feel free to check in with our fellow steering committee members as an aside if something comes up or, or you need help or clarification around something um, lastly uh, you also you all have loteria cards can uh, can somebody just pull one up real quick, pull a little loteria card? So these cards uh, were randomly assigned to you, mas o menos, randomly assigned to you, right? And uh, you're encouraged to uh, trade them through the course of the two and a half days, but by Saturday, make sure you have a card on you because that card is gonna play a pivotal role in a very important uh, session that'll happen towards uh, the end of the convening. So they do serve a purpose, and uh, make sure you hold on to the yours, but have fun, play Loteria, um, uh, you know, as a game. I didn't grow up playing Loteria because, you know, I'm Puerto Rican, but, you know, <laughs> I'm um, 
And um, lastly, you know, this, this, the genesis of this, you know, there's a timeline in the back where we get to that, but the genesis of this started uh, at Arena Stage a couple of years ago. And uh, we're gonna ask that uh, Karen Zakari has come up and uh, kind of provide some context as to how we ended up here today. Something big will come out of it. 
and it will grow. And that was the beginning of the Latino Theater Commons. We brought in eight diverse people from all over the country of Latino origin to just sit and talk and say, let's not talk about what makes us angry, let's talk about what we want to change. In the matter of 24 hours, we come up with a plan, and 17 months later, we're all here. So um, that's just the power of putting people together. There's not one person who's done it. It's been a labor of love by a lot of people. But that's the origin of us coming together. It's our monkey with a green tail story. It's a gift that keeps giving in different ways and unexpected in different ways. So welcome, you guys. mentioned, uh, and that was uh, Polly, Polly Carl, who is uh, the director of Power Round, and we're going to ask that she come up and talk a little bit about uh, the comments. This is so overwhelming and beautiful. I'm, I'm so delighted. I'm going to do a couple introductions and then I'm going to do a, just a brief overview of this thing we keep calling the common. So um, I, I want to introduce uh, very quickly the HowlRound staff uh, just because they're going to be around all weekend and they're so awesome and we're all standing up here together. So um, the, the soul of um, HowlRound is David Dower who's sitting over there. <laughs> Soul is Vijay Matthew back there. <laughs> we have two Halron uh, fellows with us right now, uh, Srila Nayak and uh, Uda Popovic, who's also here visiting us from Romania. <laughs> and, things. and then the, really the soul of um, this uh, convening uh, from the Halron side of things has been uh, Jamie Galoon. <laughs> is the executive director of the Office of the Arts here at Emerson College. And uh, Rob, um, two years ago, almost to this day, uh, David Dower and I had uh, a lunch with Rob Orchard. Uh, and uh, he uh, offered, uh, extended us an invitation to come and do our work here. And uh, it's been um, a life-changing and wonderful experience for all of us. So Rob, you want to come up just for a second? Um, I, I'm going to be very brief. I just uh, want to tell you how thrilled we are to have you here. Um, I'm fully aware of how important this, this moment is. Um, and this is a great room for it. Um, I, I'm a newbie here, and I uh, had nothing to do with this magnificent facility. I just got a chance to play with it. But one of the, one of the things that I did do, I was on a hard hat tour, and they were about to cover that wall. Um, and I asked them not to cover the wall. Um, that's the common wall with the opera house next door. And beyond the opera house in the history of Boston theater, there were many other theaters. It was the center of vaudeville. And I wanted a room that had a wall that extended back into history that would have a kind of porous relationship with what happened in the room. Um, and so I hope that this wall contributes to uh, to your deliberations. Uh, the other thing about the wall, uh, which the organizers will probably not want me to say, is it's a great place to daydream. Um, it has lots of textures and crevices and different shapes in it. Uh, and I think anybody can see a level of their own history in that wall. So be mindful of that too. And that is going to be one little anecdote about the wall. Some of you can't see it, but there's this column here. And at the base of the column, there's an, uh, an archway articulated. The building used to be owned by Joseph Kennedy, Jack Kennedy's father, and he, he, he got into the theater business because he liked, mostly because he liked the actresses. That were <laughs> <laughs> and that, that archway articulates a pathway that he had in the building to some secret sanctum. <laughs> <laughs> <where things happen. laughs> 
So finally, I also want to say that uh, <laughs> uh, I also want to say that I'm really looking forward to the next iteration of this, and there'll probably be a variety of them, but I know there's going to be a convening in Los Angeles um, that will be focused on performance, and that will be a great pleasure for us to, um, to be there um, to, to participate in that. Um, and also to mention that in Los Angeles, Emerson uh, is building a new campus. It's opening shortly. Um, that's a magnificent building. Those of you who are from Los Angeles may already know about it. Um, it's a resource for you too. We, we're proud to have provided a resource for you in Boston. And keep in mind that we also have a resource um, in LA um, for various purposes. So happy to have a conversation with, with you about that, um, if, you, if you so desire. Uh, now I'd like to, to introduce Michelle Whalen, who is the Chief a Academic Officer at Emerson College. One of the wonderful things about being at Emerson at this point in its history is we have new energy. We have a new president who you'll meet tomorrow, and we have a new chief academic officer who just started in September, <laughs> the summer, and, and she's also having an incredible impact. I know she wants to welcome you too, Michelle. mindful of speaking to the here, I do want to say a few words about Emerson College. So on behalf of the college, I really want to welcome you. We're delighted to have you here. Uh, you know, if you think about our origins in 1880, Charles Wesley Emerson, who was a cousin of Ralph Waldo, uh, had this vision of teaching as something that empowered the whole being. And we started off with one classroom, 10 students, you know, and literally about three faculty. And here we are over a century later with 3,600 undergraduates, 830 graduate students, 450 faculty, and with several presences. One is LA, the other is the castle in the Netherlands, and of course our home here. So I think, you know, when we think about the here and who we are, this is very much a part of it. Emerson conjoins intellect and craft, uh, pragmatism and creativity. We're grounded in, uh, I would say, the values of respect, inclusive excellence, and engaged teaching and learning. I'm thrilled that you're here. I can't wait to see what comes out of this historic gathering. So I hope you have a fruitful, stimulating, and ultimately Emersonian. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the impetus for HowlRound comes from the idealistic notion that theater is for everyone. It comes in response to a prevailing sense of scarcity that seemed to be driving our behavior as a field, and a firm belief that the scarcity mindset will only lead to more scarcity. And if you look around this room, all I see is abundance an abundance of knowledge and resources just waiting to be released, waiting for me to be done. Um, <laughs> I promise I'll finish quickly. <laughs> HowlRound, for those of you who don't know, designs and develops online knowledge platforms and in-person gatherings for the sake of fostering a theater commons to release, the to release the abundance and to perpetuate idealism. But what is a commons what is a theater commons and, well, what is a Latino theater commons? Put simply, commons are resources owned in common or shared among a community for the benefit of the entire community. You know it through the environmental movement, uh, the idea that air and water and natural resources belong or should belong to everyone. Well, we contend that so should theater. The key words for us 
are access, participation, self-determination, peer-to-peer learning and sharing, and the concept of moving from I to we. That my access is not as meaningful if it somehow precludes yours. That, we of, that the we of civilization trumps that I of individual success. In other words, a commons works from the bottom up. It's a DIY movement where artists, in our case, set and determine the agenda. HowlRound has an online journal, for example, where everyone and anyone can pitch an article. We have a live streaming television channel where anyone can put themselves on the calendar to live stream. And we have an interactive data map that tracks new play activity around the country. Once again, anyone can put themselves on the map. And we just discovered this, uh, this week that 88 theaters have put themselves on the map to say that their primary focus is Latino or Latina theater. Um, so uh, that was a, a surprise to all of us and really exciting. Um, and this convening is the perfect example of how a commons comes to be. Many gatherings like this come together because a group of people are sitting in an organization and saying we should talk about diversity. And so they decide to create a they, they decide to create a convening. It's a familiar kind of top-down approach where the institution drives the agenda uh, and where um, the identity, uh, where the problem is identified through the institution. But in the case of this gathering, something different has happened. Karen Zacharias approaches us to say, I'm troubled about the state of Latino theater artists in this country. Where do we come together? How do we empower ourselves? She calls together a handful of people for a conversation that HowlRound hosts. That group self-determines and writes a grant to host a larger gathering. They get the grant. The group creates a steering committee. The steering committee creates an outline for a convening. And it identifies all of you as ambassadors to that convening. You fly to Boston, <laughs> but you represent cities all around the country. You represent your community, and your community is yet another circle of engagement and participation. Five cities, Miami, Los Angeles, Dallas, New York, and Chicago, will join us via Skype on Saturday. We will live stream this entire convening. So please know we're live streaming this entire convening. <laughs> <laughs> we will post blog posts about what happened. I just like to say that because I'm always shocked when I later see myself on TV and I think, oh my god, why did I wear that? Or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's a good, you just remember you're going to be on TV. Um, we will blog post about what happened at the end of each day. We will twit out, tweet out on Twitter as we go. The I of Karen Zacharias becomes the we of a nation. And that's how a theater commons takes an idealistic notion and turns it into reality. HowlRound welcomes you to Boston. Garcia Romero and Slalak Rivas, who valiantly chaired the com this convening steering committee. I'm Tlaloc Rivas. <laughs> and I'm Anne Garcia Romero. And we're the co-chairs of the Latino Theater Commons. Uh, uh, it's the steering committee. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk a little bit about um, how this all came together. Um, so this first part is called Expanding Our Circle. Uh, in March of 2013, the Latino Latina Theater Commons held a meeting of our new steering committee to Boston uh, to envision and plan this convening. And we divided into three committees, outreach, programming, and fundraising. So our outreach committee, Clay uh, Valentin, to my left, uh, is the chair of that committee, and together that committee dealt with um, the whole uh, process of invitation, creating online surveys for all of you, and then also um, creating the satellite sites in Los Angeles, Miami, Dallas, Chicago, and New York. With the programming committee, Kinan Valdez, who chaired the programming committee, his work included developing the goals, creating the structure, 
and generating a detailed plan for our committee program. And next, the fundraising committee. I actually was the chair of that committee, and we met to seek out funders on the national, regional, Foundation Fund for National Projects, the Office of Arts at Emerson College, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and I believe Katie Steger is here with us today. Katie, thank you so much. The Ford Foundation. I'm going to sound like a PBS here. <laughs> the Edna Foundation. The Joyce Foundation the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs, and we have here today Olga Garay, English from the City of LA. <laughs> we are so happy that you can be here with us. Thank you. And in addition, we also contacted universities and individuals, a list of which are over here to my left. So we want to thank everyone for their generous support. Without you, we would not be here. Um, last thing we want to talk about, um, so we also created a documentation committee to document our time together. And that includes Dr. Brian Herrera. What, where are you? Oh, awesome. So Brian will be writing a report about everything that's going to be happening in the next two and a half days. Then we also have Dr. Jorge Huerta. Café Onda. Uh, our platform is to create an online community in conversation about the current state of Latina and Latino theater. Uh, Café Onda will contain articles, blogs, uh, live streaming of theater events, and is linked to HowlRound, an online journal of the theater commons. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about collab the collaborative nature of who we are, which is the steering committee members were all volunteers who generated and uh, who, who, whose generous contribution included their time and talent to the Latino Theater Commons. Uh, our committees collaborated together uh, through monthly, bi monthly, and weekly conference calls, which were moderated by Anne and myself. Uh, to date, we have had over 50 conference calls <laughs> in which we discussed, planned, shared, dreamed, forged ahead together to realize our community plans. And so, in uh, conclusion, I want to say we're so grateful for this remarkable work that's been happening in the past year. That's brought all of us here together. And especially thank you to the steering committee for all of your hours, your thoughts, your inspirations, and all of your hard work. Um, we're hopeful that the gathering here in Boston will be the start of many more expansive conversations and connections that will continue the field of Latina and Latino theater in the 21st century. Adelante, si se puede! So beautiful to have you here. So, um, and now we'd like to hand the program back over to our master facilitators. So we are going to keep this brief. What we wanted to do was just to provide an overview of what the three-day process will look like. In your books, which are great documents, on page eight, you will find the purpose, the vision, the big objectives, and the organizing plan. We put it in your laps here so that during the off hours, you can peruse this book and study those. If you have any questions, you can ask us. But this convening has been designed to create an arc and a journey. And so tonight is the night of connection. In a few moments, we will begin in earnest this connection process through an interactive array of experiences. But tonight is about connecting, knowing where we're coming from, quite literally, 
but also figuratively, spiritually, but also getting to know who is in the room. It's about connecting. Tomorrow, Friday, is about deepening our knowledge, learning about ourselves, what we do, how we do it, why we do it, what's up with what we do, what do we love about what we do, where we would like to make some improvements about how we do what we do. We're learning, we're deepening our knowledge and deepening our connections tomorrow. And then finally, Saturday, we bring it home. We start to vision, we look forward, and we come up with some next steps. And so that is a general overview. We are about to commence our convening. Are you ready? <laughs> so we will begin with an interactive process. At this particular moment, we recognize that we're all coming from various particular places. And so we are going to use the four directions in order to be able to orient and start our convening. This particular wall here represents the West. And in a few moments, you're going to line up from the West Coast. Those of you who are coming, from the East Coast will line up on the opposite side. Those of you who are coming from the Midwest, in this ceremony you'll be representing the North, you will line up on this wall. And those of you coming from self-identified the South will be moving in this direction. We are going to create a circle, but what it, it's necessary for all of you to be able to create a space. So we're gonna organically move our chairs aside as necessary in a second. But what you need to bring into this particular space is the altar offering that you brought or prepared for this particular moment. So take, a, take one minute literally and grab your 